Good morning. Welcome to worship. This morning we, we will be wrapping up our Advent series, Come Lord Jesus. We will, this morning we will see how Jesus comes as Emmanuel, which means God with us. Today we'll be following the order of service called the Service of Word and Sacrament as it begins on page 26 in the front of the hymnal. And we join now in our opening hymn, hymn number five. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson for the fourth Sunday in Advent is recorded in Isaiah chapter 7. The Lord promised that deliverance would come through the gift of Emmanuel. And how we would recognize him, it would be through the birth from being born of a virgin. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. We join in the psalm of the day, Psalm 24, on page 73 in the front of the hymnal.
Our second lesson is recorded in Romans chapter 1. After thousands of years of God's promises, Paul sees them all fulfilled in Christ. Jesus is Emmanuel, true God and true man. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Alleluia. The Sunday school children will now sing a couple Christmas hymns for us. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel for the fourth Sunday in Advent is recorded in Matthew chapter 1. In faith, Joseph accepted that within the womb of his bride to be was Emmanuel, the very Son of God, the promised Savior from sin. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. 
because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, Hymn 23. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, there is nothing like a good birthday party, especially when the party is for you. 
the cake and the ice cream that you prefer has been prepared. Your family and friends have all been invited. And best of all, the gifts are all for you. But can you imagine what it would be like to have millions of people celebrate your birthday? You would never get done opening all the gifts. So do you know of anyone who does have millions of people remember and celebrate their birth every year? Yeah, of course you do, right? Every December 25th, people all over the world celebrate the birth of Jesus. So what makes the birth of Jesus so special that people all over the world celebrate it? In fact, why does God insist that we celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, we will consider two reasons why this morning. First of all, his birth is a sign that God is with us. And second, our celebration is a sign that we are with God. Now imagine your surprise if you were paging through the birth announcements in the newspaper and you came across an announcement that said, Jim and Jane invite you to celebrate the arrival of their son to be born in the year 2722. An announcement about the birth of a, a son that will take place 700 years in the future? Well, that's the kind of birth announcement that the people of Judah received in our text from the prophet Isaiah. Even though God doesn't tell them exactly when the birth was going to happen, the people of Judah would know that it had, ha that it had happened because the child would be born of a virgin. And what is more, he would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. We know, of course, that this prophecy was fulfilled when the Son of God took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary in the little town of Bethlehem. But why did God make this birth announcement about Jesus at this specific time in history through the prophet Isaiah? Well, the people of Judah, and especially the people of Jerusalem, needed to hear that God was with them. At this time, Judah was led by King Ahaz, probably one of the most wicked kings in the family line of David. Although his grandfather and his father had been faithful to the only true God, Ahaz gladly followed the false gods of whatever nation seemed to be doing well at the time. Like a careless driver who keeps switching lanes in order to get ahead without regard for the other drivers or without regard for the speed limit. Ahaz thought nothing of shoving the Lord's altar aside in order to put one idol after another in the Lord's temple. Ahaz even sacrificed his own children to the false god Moloch by throwing them into the fire. Of course, none of that made the nation of Judah any stronger. It actually made things worse. For example, in one day of fighting, 120,000 soldiers from Judah were killed, while another 200,000 people were taken captive. And news had now reached Jerusalem that the enemy was marching toward the city, intent on destroying it. It's no wonder that the hearts of King Ahaz and the people of Jerusalem were shaken. So would Ahaz finally turn to the Lord for help? Sadly, no. The prophet Isaiah did not find King Ahaz on his knees asking God for forgiveness and help. No, instead he found him out checking out the, the city's waterworks in preparation for the siege that was coming. And that was typical of King Ahaz. He would much rather rely on his own wisdom and strength than rely on God. And that same thing can happen to us, can't it? Instead of relying on God to provide, we want to prove that we can do it ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that you should just sit back and wait for God to drop food into your lap. No, God wants you to work, and through that, he provides for our needs. But as we toil away at our jobs, we can easily begin to think that it all depends on us. And so we spend more overtime in the office 
rather than praying to God asking for help. Or we scour the internet looking for investment tips rather than cracking open our Bibles for guidance on eternal matters. Like King Ahaz, we think that we know what is best for us and we don't need God to instruct us. So what message did Isaiah deliver to wicked King Ahaz? Well, you'd expect him to say, this is the end for you, King. You have cut God out of your life one too many times and now he is going to cut you out of his. But that is not what he said. Amazingly, this is what Isaiah reported in the the verses before our text. Keep calm and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram, and of the son of Ramalia. Aram, Ephraim, and Ramalia's son have plotted your ruin, but it will not take place. It will not happen. Now, you would have thought that King Ahaz would have been overjoyed to hear that God was on his side and coming to his rescue. You'd expect Ahaz to give Isaiah a big hug or at least a high five, but he just stood there. And so God didn't give up. He tried one more time to to call Ahaz to faith. We're told, again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest height. God was offering to do a miracle, any miracle, to prove that what he had said would actually take place. So what was Ahaz's response? Well, he said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Ahaz ignored God's offer. He knew that if he took God up on his offer to do a miracle, he would have to buy into God's plan for him and change his life. And Ahaz wasn't interested in doing that. At this stubbornness, we see that Isaiah almost lost his temper. He said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Ahaz was going to get a sign whether he wanted one or not. A virgin would give birth to a son, a son who was more than human, a son who was also God. This sign, of course, was of no benefit to the unbelieving Ahaz, for this special child would not come until hundreds of years later, long after Ahaz was dead. So is the birth of God's son to the Virgin Mary beneficial to us. Well, of course it is, you say, right? It's a sign that God is with us. That's true, but is God's presence what you really want? Think of it this way. If I tell you that there's a fire truck parked outside of your home, you probably won't respond by saying, oh, that's awesome. I, w- I really wanted to see a fire truck up close. Oh, you're probably going to call home in a panic wondering what is wrong. The presence of a fire truck usually means that there is a problem. Likewise, God's holy presence among sinners should signify trouble too. For we, like Ahaz, have despised God's patient grace. Why, even today God is offering us another miraculous sign that he is with us. In Holy Communion, we will will receive Jesus' body and blood together with the bread and the wine. And yet, how many times don't we stroll up to the communion rail without any real appreciation for what God is offering us in the sacrament? We come up to communion because we feel it's expected of us as a member of this church. Well, it's because of sins like that that we need God's presence, His gracious presence. Sure, you might not like to hear that there is a fire truck parked outside of your home, but then again, you will also be happy to hear that because a fire truck comes to help. And so did Jesus. He didn't come down to this earth to spy on us to see who's been naughty or nice. 
Jesus came to save us from our sins. We need Jesus, the God-man, to do this saving for us because without him, it would be like trying to put out a five-alarm fire with just a squirt gun. No, we need more power than that to put out the fires of hell. We need Emmanuel, God with us, who smothered the fires of hell with the body that he offered on the cross. And therefore, we celebrate the birth of this child because this birth reminds us that God is with us, that God is on our side, that God came here to save us from our sins. And there's another equally important reason why we celebrate the birth of this child. Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus to show that they are with God. If King Ahaz was here today, I imagine he would laugh at our Christmas preparations. Ahaz would be content to just leave the baby Jesus away in the manger, out in the cold, out of his life. After all, Ahaz wanted to be the master of his own fate and be left to believe whatever he wanted to believe. To celebrate the birth of the Christ child would mean having to give up that power. Of course, I haven't met many Ahazes in our day and age. People who, who refuse to celebrate Christmas. No, the, the problem is that millions of people celebrate Christmas and they believe that they can celebrate Christmas without celebrating the birth of the Christ child. In the United Arab Emirates, for example, they put up a Christmas tree one year and hung $11 million worth of jewelry on that tree. They didn't do so to honor the, the Christ child, but rather to show off how rich they are. Well, could that be the point of all the presents that we stash underneath our Christmas tree? Do they say, glory to us in the highest? No, instead, God wants you to celebrate the birth of the Christ child with an attitude that shows you are with God, content to live the way that he wants us to live, by forgiving others, by enjoying Christmas parties without drinking too much, by spending less time searching for that perfect gift, and by spending more time reflecting on the perfect gift we've already received in Jesus Christ. No, there's nothing quite like a birthday party, especially when it's remembering the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus' birth, we no longer have to guess what God thinks about us. His birth is a sign that God is with us. So go ahead and celebrate Christ's birth as a sign that we, God's thankful people, are also with him. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31 in the front of the hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offerings. Please stand for prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for preparing the kingdom of heaven for us through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, and for making us members of the same through faith in him. O oh, what joy, what hope, what peace is ours through Jesus. We know that for his sake you now rule us with your grace, pardoning all of our sins, and that you will give us everlasting life in heaven. No longer are we held in the bondage of fear and the power of sin, but trusting in your Son, we are able to live victoriously over sin to the glory of your name. All praise to you, dear Father. O Holy Spirit, continue your work in us that we never lose our hold on everlasting life. Led by you instead of our sinful flesh, may we always seek first the kingdom of heaven, putting your word in the promise of everlasting life it brings ahead of everything. Spirit of God, extend the preaching of the gospel to the entire world so that all may hear the wondrous message that Jesus was born and that he lived and died and lives again for them. Cause people everywhere to accept the kingdom with repentant and believing hearts when it is offered to them. And make each of us able and willing ambassadors of the kingdom, boldly proclaiming salvation in Jesus' name to others. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This time I encourage you to continue preparing your hearts and minds for receiving the Lord's Supper. Please stand. We continue on page 33 in the front of the hymnal with the liturgy for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Through his holy prophets, he promised a king to bring light to those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand. We join to sing, Thank the Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Good morning once again. We're glad that you could join us for worship this morning. Uh, thank you to the Sunday school children and their teachers for sharing the joy of our Savior's birth with us this morning in song. We appreciate your work on that. It's a reminder that next weekend for our Christmas worship, we will have our Christmas Eve candlelight service Saturday night at 7 p.m. And then join us again the next day on Sunday, uh, Christmas Day at 10 a.m., uh, for our Christmas festival service. So two opportunities to, to be here in God's house to praise our newborn king. 